is the area of the uh, Constellation Library. Taken it in the 31st of the May, uh, around 3.41. A cropped area of the Constellation Lyra. Tries to see that uh, stars down to magnitude 8 are visible. And even some uh, variable stars, X, Y, Lyra and R, Lyra. I wonder if I can use the tiny one for measuring the magnitude of the variable stars. I was able to turn off the infrared filter so it picks up all the reds. And these reds are these two... Uh, uh, red giants. I wonder if I can use this for measuring the uh, magnitude of the variable stars. Uh, anybody know what we can do with this? It's very interesting. Okay, like many of the amateur astronomers, um, I'm using Burnham Celestial Handbook for many years, many decades actually, I can tell you. Uh, I have the Sky Atlas 2000 and also this packet of Sky Atlas by Sky and Telescope. This handy is a smaller, can use it easier. And uh, today because I was uh, using the tiny one, Astro photographic camera, and I noticed that uh, my uh, picture by the tiny one has actually recorded several variable stars in the constellation of Vega. X, Y, Lyra and R, Lyra, quite brighter than what they should actually be. Uh, I have turned off the infrared filter in that. That's amazing uh, uh, capability f uh, function in this camera. And probably that's one of the reasons that they are brighter. They are as bright as Vega or they are slightly less brighter. Vega is magnitude uh, zero, magnitude one. And these ones are actually magnitude two, as if uh, they are red giants. So uh, I wonder if it's because it was sensitive. The sensor, CMOS sensor, was too sensitive. Picked it up because I've turned off the um, infrared IR filter. So anyway, I'm not uh, thinking about that. This Burnham Celestial Handbook is not enough for me. I looked online. I couldn't find much information about this two stars. A little bit here and there, but not to the depth. And I'm wondering if I can uh, find in this the Sky Night Observer's Guide. It's a four volume. And uh, about it, this volume, which is a volume two, Spring and Summer, I never opened it. It was during the autumn winter about this, actually. So I didn't use this one. It is yet packed. So I'm going to open it and just see what can I find about this. It's practically the unboxing of this Sky Night Observer's Guide. It's an ultimate guide for the amateur astronomers and uh, is by George Robert Keppel and Glenn W. Sanner and I bought it quite a, at a good price let us op open it unbox it okay so um, I'm removing the packaging well packed And I'm interested to see the constellation Lyra and these two stars that I was able to observe. Let me remove all of this. I need two hands to do this well-packed book, actually. Uh, this is one of those books that when you read it, you, you wish that you have written it yourself. <laughs> it's a kind of feeling of envy and praise at the same time. Okay, now I'm going to open it. Oh, interesting two star charts there is one volume of this for the southern sky so really Wilman Bell which is a publisher specializing in astronomy books originally in the USA is published in 2014 it's the ultimate guide I'm telling you and I'm now going to see where I can find about the Lyra Lopus Lyra overview interesting stars and these Pascal objects, so oh, I'm going to 271, page 271. Okay, look, we are here, the Lyra. Of course, Epsilon and the same thing, everybody does that with their telescopes. So test for the resolving power of your telescope. But I'm after this variable star, XY Lyra. And uh, magnitude maximum 7.37.8. In my picture, that's brighter than this. So, 
and R Lyra, 13 R Lyra, 3.85. So in my picture, this is brighter than 3.8. 3. This is almost 4, magnitude 4. In my picture, this is magnitude 2, probably. Is it because that uh, I've turned on the turned off the infrared filter? And because this is red giant, practically it has been leaving a um, bigger circle on the sensor. Interesting. Anyway, this this book is the ultimate guide. If you're amateur astronomer, you have to have this book. And this volume, which is volume two. It's 504 pages. I recommend everyone, if you want, if you're serious about astronomy, this is the book you need. And I'm not getting serious because I know seeing that this tiny one camera is doing an amazing job. I live in a relatively dark area, but that sensor, CMOS sensor of this, when I turn off the infrared filter, it's so sensitive. It shows that my sky is actually brighter <laughs> because we have some towns around here. So, and I wonder if I have to go to Wales really to be able to see the Milky Way in its full glory somewhere in the mountains of the Milky uh, Wales or even Shropshire probably. So, I'm looking forward to that. That tell us that uh, little camera, tiny one, has really opened my eye to new horizons. And if you don't have a tiny one, you can go for nano one. Nano, nano one is a smaller version of this tiny one. I'm really getting excited. My love of astronomy is really kicking back. 